This uh, mic is a ways away, and I think maybe I should be bringing it a little closer. Uh, Cheryl, how are we sounding? There. Don't hear it? I can hear you, but oh, it's not so much. Okay. There we go. I think that might be better. So a ways away. Try this. This uh, we're sounding okay there? Jam, we're okay? Yep. Okay. Well, it is a uh, extraordinary pleasure uh, for me uh, to be able to introduce this morning Mr. Larry Pratt. Uh, Larry Pratt is the Executive Director of Gun Owners of America. And uh, Gun Owners of America is a pro-Second Amendment group that uh, has uh, extraordinary integrity. And uh, having said that, uh, I will let Larry Pratt speak for himself. And Larry, thank you for being with us. Thank and, you. Uh, this, the stage is yours. Thank you. Good to be with you. Well, it's a real pleasure to be able to be here today on behalf of Alan Quist and his bid for, for Congress. We need people in the Congress that have his dedication to the Constitution in general and the Second Amendment in particular. And we are concerned that uh, we have the kind of leadership that Alan will bring. Uh, it's not enough to have people that are going to vote right if somebody makes it happen, but we need people who are willing to take the leadership to put forth bills, to put forth amendments, and to go and push and shove, and, and a lot of times that means you've got to kind of coax the leadership along. Things don't happen in Congress uh, uh, just because the votes might be theoretically there. We theoretically have a pro-Second Amendment Congress, but the Congress has not been taking the kind of initiative that it needs to be taking. And that's why it was uh, definitely worth a trip to come from Washington out here to Minnesota on behalf of uh, Alan. And uh, glad that you're here this morning as well. Appreciate it. Um, I could single out a few things that particularly bother us. We, we have published a voting record that you can go to at gunowners.org and under the Congress section you can pull up uh, the House ratings for each individual member of the Congress. Uh, but uh, I would perhaps want to single out that uh, there was a concealed carry measure that would have had states recognize each other's concealed carry permits. For example, you have a concealed carry law here. If someone here has one of those permits, you could go to any of your neighboring states with a permit system and that's all you would need is the permit that you already have here in Minnesota. Right now, if a state doesn't recognize another state's permit, then you're not able to go to that other state and carry concealed. This federal law would say, no, we're going to treat it just like a driver's license. You don't need a new license when you go from state to state. And that would be the idea behind uh, that particular measure. Uh, it had passed the House in the last Congress. Uh, it wasn't the strongest version that it could have been. We'd like to see that addressed again when the Congress gets back next year, and hopefully Alan Quist will be there uh, to help us out uh, on that. Uh, another of the uh, measures that we uh, would like to see, uh, well, maybe put it this way, that we were particularly unhappy about uh, Mr. Walls, who wasn't with us on uh, the first issue, and he uh, wasn't with us on the parks issue. Uh, we had a problem getting uh, even some of the so-called blue dog Democrats to recognize that uh, it's a bad idea to tell somebody who lives in a state, uh, I'm not sure what the laws uh, had been here in Minnesota, but many states made it so that you could carry a gun, uh, concealed carry, but they would, uh, there was a national prohibition on having guns carried in parks, and now it, the state law is what governs rather than that national prohibition. That was something that we didn't have Mr. Walls' support on. Somehow, uh, I guess his view is that uh, your life is not as worth protecting in a national park as it might be out on the street outside of this building. Uh, it's a strange reasoning, 
but then it's a strange idea anyway that people have a problem with an armed citizenry. Um, so we've had to deal with that uh, strange thinking for a long time. Um, another one of the measures that we were looking at uh, was the um, um, sorry, I can hardly see uh, my page here. You've got a number of things here. Let me see what you've pulled up, Alan, because it's probably on this list. Oh, of course, um, the um, Obamacare legislation was something that uh, a lot of people wonder, well, why is Gun Owners of America concerned about it? Well, very simply, privacy of a gun owner's name is extremely important. If his name is not kept private, it's subject to being put on a registration list, and that's exactly what Obamacare did, was to say that uh, people's records, uh, all private records, could be pawed through uh, by bureaucrats in order uh, for them to see who should or should not, in their opinion, have a gun. And if they found some kind of a medical diagnosis that might challenge the person's ability to have a gun, they could be put on a list that would keep them from buying when they went to a store and were subject to the instant background check. And so Obamacare represented a major breach of the privacy of gun owners' names. Uh, if somebody hasn't been found by a court of law to be a threat to himself or someone else, that's the governing law. And Obamacare goes way beyond that and puts it in the discretion of bureaucrats who think you uh, shouldn't have a gun. So uh, we, we have a big problem with Obamacare just from a privacy point of view. And unhappily, Mr. Walls uh, didn't seem to have that same problem. So those are some of the reasons why we think it's uh, important that we have a change. We've known uh, Alan Quist for a long time. We've worked with him on a number of issues. He's been in your state legislature here, and uh, we know that he would be somebody that would be in the forefront of keeping government out of areas that it doesn't belong in. And the Second Amendment area has been invaded by government for years and years, and it's time that uh, we put it uh, within its limits so that it's not uh, threatening the, the right to keep and bear arms. Uh, that's certainly not a concern that your incumbent congressman shares with us. Uh, let me just leave it at this point and see if there are any questions. I'd be happy to try to answer them if uh, somebody has a question. And otherwise, uh, we can go from there. Yeah? Could you reiterate the name of the two initial pieces of legislation that you mentioned, the one about uh, uh, parks and the one about uh, portability uh, of uh, uh, the concealed carry license? There was a measure that passed the uh, House, and uh, they just didn't get to it in the Senate. Uh, that says that it, uh, a concealed carry permit must be recognized by another state. So if they have a concealed carry system, then they have to uh, accept the validity of your concealed carry permit. So basically you would be good in all 49 states, the exception being Illinois. Uh, they don't have a concealed carry system. Uh, evidently the citizens of Illinois can't be trusted by their government. And so the government has not uh, condescended to have a concealed carry system. But otherwise, this, this measure says that you wouldn't have to go through the present nightmare of uh, am I legal, am I not, uh, what is the law of this state or that state. Uh, you'd have to uh, respect uh, whatever prohibitions might attach to a concealed carry permit. Maybe you couldn't take it into a church in one state, but in another state you could. Uh, We've got a long way to go. It's not that this national law would solve all of our concerns, but at least it uh, is a step in the right direction. And the other uh, measure that you were asking about was the, I'm sorry, the... Well, it was the second one that you mentioned. Uh, I, uh, I'm trying to think what, what was it about being able to, uh, uh, that, yeah, state parks that have federal law. Um, sure. Right. Uh, these are national parks. And so the... Uh, there had been a ban, uh, a federal ban, uh, on having firearms in those parks, and now the national law says whatever the law of the state is will govern. So it, it just got the federal government out 
of carrying guns in those parks. Anybody else?